Today we're going to look at why the Holy Quran decrees that death is when there is no brainstem function, not when your heart, lungs or other organs stop. To start, let's take a look at something that has been the stuff of nightmares and horror films for decades. It's the story of some poor soul who, for whatever reason, has been declared dead and buried six feet under, but they're still alive. Now, if you think this story can only happen in a horror movie, you'd be dead wrong, pun intended. One look at recent stories right from the news proves it. A woman who gave birth three months after she was pronounced dead. Another who was still alive when she was put into a body bag in the morgue and subsequently froze to death. Why do these horrific cases exist? Because of this alarming fact, there are no universal guidelines for doctors when it comes to declaring a person dead. Yes, you heard that correctly. Even among doctors, the definition of death isn't fully agreed upon. You're dead when a doctor says you're dead. A person can be pronounced dead if their heart stops, but they can also be revived in many cases. People can also be kept alive with machines, even though their brain stem has 0% functionality. In 2013, a study showed that in cases where CPR is used, it should be administered for at least 38 minutes because a person can still be revived for that amount of time with no lasting brain injury in many cases. But here's where the difference is, and it's very important. Once the brain stem permanently stops functioning, there's no way of reversing it. No matter what happens, that person's heart will eventually stop beating, even if a ventilator is used. The most important fact to remember about the brain is this. It bestows upon us the one thing that makes us truly human, consciousness. With that fact in mind, the irreversible loss of consciousness can and should be defined as death and vice versa. Now here's another fact that might surprise you. When you sleep, your brainstem is inactive and there are those who argue that sleep is also a loss of consciousness due to the inactivity of the brainstem effect in neurons when a person is sleeping. The brainstem also becomes inactive when a person dies, causing a loss of consciousness as well. While they might seem like identical definitions, there's one difference. Loss of consciousness during sleep is reversible, while loss of consciousness due to death is irreversible. And it's for this very specific reason that doctors, when declaring a patient dead, should limit their declaration to the state of the brainstem and nothing else. In effect, as the Holy Quran pointed out 1400 years ago, sleep is like death and death like sleep. Verse 1, it is he, Allah, who takes your souls by night when you're asleep and has knowledge of all that you have done by day. Then he raises, wakes you up again, that a term appointed your life period be fulfilled. Then in the end unto him will be your return. Then he will inform you what you used to do. Verse 2, Allah, God, takes the souls at the time of their death and that which has not died in its sleep. He withholds that against which he has decreed death, but loses the other till a stated term. Surely in that are signs for a people who think deeply. Think about that for a moment. 1400 years ago, the Holy Quran already had a specific, unquestionable definition for death, namely when the brainstem no longer functions. It has nothing to do with heart function, whether the person can breathe or any other bodily functions or organs. What this means is that around the world, millions of people have been declared dead when in fact they were not. That is why in the interests of human rights, Muslims believe that doctors should only consider a patient dead if their brainstem has completely stopped working. Until that point, any and all measures should be taken to keep them alive and not pronounce them dead simply because their heart, breathing or other functions have stopped. The first and foremost Quranic verses say that all humans have the basic right to live and that human life should be respected. Yes, when we sleep, the brainstem effect and neurons stop functioning for a short time, but then we wake up. One thing to keep in mind that is very important to this issue is that it was discovered by Macaulay and Stinton in Scholopedia in 2008 that when we sleep, the effect and neurons in our brainstem become hyperpolarized and have nearly no action potentials. It's for this reason that before sleeping every night, you should pray that your brainstem neurons are depolarized so that you may once again wake up and enjoy another day. Why not make sure that everyone around the world has the chance to wake up by following the Holy Quran and only declaring someone dead if their brainstem has permanently stopped, nothing else. By the way, until the 1950s, death was considered to be the point when any one of the vital functions, heartbeat or respiration ceased. 
This is what, according to Dr. James Burnett, a neurologist at Dartmouth College's Giesel School of Medicine in New Hampshire, stated in his speech in Live Science on June the 19th, 2014. It wasn't until 1959 that the two French neurologists, Maurice Guyon and Pierre Molleret, changed the definition of death by defining it based on neurological criteria instead of cardiopulmonary criteria. They really saved us from being buried alive by stating a specific, unquestionable definition for death. The irreversible loss of consciousness can and should be defined as death. But this took place in only 1959. The Holy Quran, however, stated its specific, unquestionable definition for death, the irreversible loss of consciousness can and should be defined as death 1400 years ago. In order to truly respect human life, we need to agree on a universal definition of death. And just as the Quran has shown us, that definition should be based on the brainstem of the person in question permanently stopping. Nothing more, nothing less.